Hoogste. En just ik weer op. En dan um, each day when I'm just sitting. The mind, the mind comes, you know, like uh, thoughts go past, and I sit and observe them, and um, I know I'm not the thoughts, I know I'm not the body. There's a difference between knowing that and being that knowing. Does that make sense? From the point of view of the mind, I don't know that I'm not the body. When there is experience of stillness or silence, all there is is silence. So there is no thought, no idea, and definitely no, not the body. And it is one with the body. Now, with the mind, recognize that the thoughts are not real. That they are like a dream. This you recognize, right? Mm -hmm. Once you recognize the thought are a dream, who you are is not a dream because it is an actual experience. The thoughts are just superimposed on, on this, the experience of the beingness, which is you. So when there's no thoughts, um, I am what remains? Yes. Because obviously you don't use you. Right? That's not your experience. You do not lose you when there's no thought. And it doesn't mean that having no thought that's a... It has nothing to do with having thoughts or no thoughts. Because <clears throat> you cannot stop the movement nor you cannot move that which is immovable just recognize that the thoughts are not real and the more there's the recognition or in that moment then See if there is a sense of reality, of a presence, and fix the attention on that. Except it's not something the mind can do. The presence which is you reveals itself to itself, or the presence reveals reveal itself to you, because you are that presence. The mind cannot gain that stillness. Therefore, as long as the thoughts appear to be real, examine them. I investigate them. Don't just observe the thoughts. Because when you observe the thoughts, you give them energy. You give them life. 
if you observe a plant a flower and then you put another flower by one one meter by it and you ignore it the one you observe would live longer than the one you ignore so when you observe thoughts for some reason you still give it attention yeah I've been just um, more so observing my thoughts and then um, say during the day if I'm walking around and there's thoughts I'd, um, I'd recognize there's thoughts and then go okay that's me thinking now and then try and be more present than that you know is that giving it more energy? Just discriminate it. This thinking now, and I'm not the thinker. I am the changeless awareness, which is still a thought. Yet after that, if there is no thought appearing, you remain. The more you're vigilant with the thoughts, there would be a clear recognition when the mind is active and it has many thoughts, and when the mind is not active, which is just a state of mind, and there's either less thoughts or there's a gap between thoughts. Mm -hmm. In the gap you remain, then you fix the attention on that. That's the clue for the mind, because once you fix the attention on that, all the rest would open by itself. Okay. Discriminate. Uh, and the discrimination can be simple. Either when the thought appear, see it after it appeared and see that it's not real. So either it's this thought is not real or I'm not this thought. And distinguish between the two. When the thought is about something that is not happening, the thought is not real. When there is a voice in the head that is thinking discriminating this thought is not real is tricky it would be better to discriminate I'm not the thinker I'm okay. not the one who is thinking this thought and then shift the attention in the mind still I am changeless awareness okay and either concentrate on that it, it depends if the mind is active then you give it a job to get attached to that and change less awareness until there is enough space and you stop the concentration and if there is no thought appearing then change less awareness remain which is you and you, you stay as that thoughts come more when I'm um, interacting with people or so than when I'm just sitting yeah except it's not limited to a physical position it's all more so are you how much you're talking or not so keeping quiet is a practice into itself mm -hmm. talking less and especially talking less nonsense if you understand the discriminating between talking about nothing or talking about the subject of at least that it reminds the mind where to look and where to put the attention on mm -hmm. And if one thinks 
they want to speak because they imagine they have to then be very precise speak what you have to say and leave it alone and if somebody asks you a question give them the answer for the question they ask don't start to give them a whole answer and in the end the answer for their question It's good, just be aware of the sensation because any physical experience is a bodily sensation, emotion, negative emotions, because what has to come into the surface is negativity, means the, the main one is anger and rage. The identity of the ego, which is not real, yet it's based on anger and rage, intense rage, internally. Because the whole, the ego is driven by desire, so it never gets what it wants. So it's furious about. And then it, it, it says it's because the outside, because if I would get what I want, I would be happy. And it never get what it wants because always wanting takes it away from the present moment. Mm -hmm. So it never gets what it wants. It's always get what it needs. And what it needs is what is happening. And what it wants is in the future. And it's not happening. Therefore it is in rage. And there is a lot of anger that has to come into the surface to clear itself that's pain which express itself in the mind as negative thoughts so the moment you recognize the bodily sensation immediately out of habit the mind labels it unpleasant pain feeling sadness anger frustration rage then negativity spring forth of lots of negative thoughts or just judgment and negative you don't even understand how come the mind thinks these thoughts the, so it's enough to be momentarily with the sensation <clears throat> then put the attention on the thoughts and when there's neg negative thoughts discriminate I'm not these thoughts this thought not real not real not real that's one way It can be a form of reactivity when the mind doesn't want or resist the thoughts themselves. So you can join them in another way. A statement and a question. I shouldn't experience this thought, this kind of thoughts. Is it true? And you don't answer the question. These thoughts are bad. Is it true? I know what's best for me. Is it true? You just keep statement and a question what it does it cuts the reactivity in the mind and if it do, if the mind doesn't the attention doesn't go to the body sensation it's gone then it's finished mm -hmm. so observing the sensation even if one learns to scan the body there is a different techniques like in Vipassana you learn to scan the body. So even if there is discomfort in the body, you never stay there for more than a few seconds and you continue with the mind scanning the body. 
And there's a reason for that, because if the mind stays with the sensation for too long, out of habit, it reacts to it. Okay, because um, a lot of times I get, it feels like the energy gets stuck in my head, and that's already labeled already, hasn't it? Energy stuck in your head means you feel you're too mental? Yeah, I know, it just feels like sometimes there's, um, if there's sensation in the head, up around the forehead and um, I just sit with it but I think I pay it too much attention because I'm kind of focused on just sitting there with it but I can just I don't know how to explain but I just sit there with it and you can play shift the attention to the breath mm -hmm. and observe the breath so that attention, if there is energy locked or trapped in a particular body position, when you observe the breath, it enables the energy to flow and release it. Except don't observe the, to the breath because you're attached to future outcome. Observe Sorry, the, what was that? Don't observe the breath in order to get attached to future outcome for the energy to be released. Observe the breath for observing it and that's it. Because everything is changing and dynamic, have the mind enough flexible to shift and change according to the change. When the mind tend to looking for one solution, give me the remedy, one, two, three. There isn't such. It's dynamic, it's constantly changing. You're the master. The master within you meet every situation, every thought, every bodily sensation for the first time work with that every time for the first time for everyone is like that they just imagine that it's otherwise and that way you're not stuck to be rigid in one way or the right way or wrong way there isn't such it's what works for you and you have to find a way to work with the illusion and then wake up to who you are, which is already you. So just remove what you're not and you reveal to yourself. It happens by itself. It's not something the mind do. You just have to remove what covers it. So all the habit or all the effort is to undo the habit of identifying with the thoughts to be you. If I say I'm not the thoughts, is that not a belief as well though? Yeah, that's another thought. Mm -hmm. Except at least you don't feed the energy anymore so you cut it. Because the, the more you cut it, the less it's evolved, right? It doesn't, and then so the, it doesn't, the dream does not, uh, it doesn't perpetuate. That's all. Yes, of course, it's just another thought. The mind is undoing itself. Yeah, if you have... Um, the same entity that brings the cloud, removes the cloud. It's the wind, just as a metaphor. The mind created the illusion. It's the higher mind that undo the illusion and disappears. Because who you are never moves. So it doesn't do anything. It has no preference, it has no thought. It's not a, it's not a human, it's not, yes? Mm -hmm. 
Don't believe that you are not the thought. See. Examine. Contemplate on that. Don't say just as a parent. This is where the piercing, deep insight, it has to be seen. Obviously, any thought cannot be the truth, the reality. Even seeing that while the thought is being discriminated brings you closer to the vantage point of you or brings the mind closer to you. The more the mind goes outward into a dream, although it's all in the mind, the farther it is from the source of light which is you. So at the moment I, um, I just work and then I come home and I sit be quiet and, um, so it's better not to be social or does it matter because sometimes I think that I know it's just a thought but sometimes I think that if you don't interact you might be missing things um, you might be hiding in your mind, you know, like way. I don't know what's best for you. I don't know what's better, whether to social or not social. You would just, it's more important that you notice that anything you do, which habit pushes you out to do it? Is it lacking something? Is it fear? Is it because you are avoiding something internally within you? That's more important that you notice. Mm -hmm. And it's again, don't limit, don't limit the, the seeing, the inner seeing to a posture, sitting. You can be out in the public, noise, music, and as long as your, your attention is either thoughts or the stillness which is you, then if, it's, if you experience you, then there's no one there. If you pay attention to the thoughts, you can, that can be a gift, how much there is still reactivity judgments resisting mm -hmm. and you you just notice it you're aware of it and you're aware that it just plays itself out to clear itself as long as you don't feed it like it is real no resisting it so anything that happens is a gift to see to show you what is not completely done within you. Most yeah, well, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, from, from morning to night, whether I be in work or anything I do, I tend to keep my focus more within. Try not to be outward, even though I'm I'm in work or whatever. And um,
I just want to be clear that I'm not avoiding or anything like that, you know. Only you know. Nobody can tell what's going on inside you. It's your job. So if fear arises, it's not fear. I suppose it's just the uh, body sensation of fear. Acknowledge. Um, acknowledge that it's just this body sensation. Let it pass through, or don't wait for an outcome. Fear, fear. First of all, is a thought. Then, then it follows as a physical reaction in the body, as a sensation. Check what what is the mind afraid from. So you really see. It's always about something in the future that is not happening right now it's always about losing something you have or not gaining something you want okay it's imagine something that's how it scares itself then just discriminate or see the difference that okay the mind is scared of something that is not happening now so it's imagining it so the fear is imaginary the mind is dreaming and you leave it alone and you come back to be at least even more present with what is happening with what is so just be more present then with just the actual feeling of fear or whatever the feeling is no the feeling is just a, a physical reaction so there's nothing just you're aware of it and you leave that alone. Okay. Yeah, don't stay too long on the sensation. Because the mind, out of habit, reacts to it. Most minds don't recognize it. Yet if you work a little bit with sensation of breath, you observe the breath, you'll see the mind escapes it very quickly. And then it took some time for you to catch it. The same happens with the bodily sensation, especially when it doesn't like it. It labels it and, and, and reacts. And then the mind doesn't catch it because it identifies with the reactivity. So there's not enough awareness. And then people believe that they are present with the sensation they are not and that's how they they perpetuate the negativity and the bodily sensation so the mind has to be very skillful and because it's only in the thoughts put the attention on the thoughts just recognize the sensation and go and work and see what what are the thoughts and work with the thoughts on the subtle Okay, I, just, I haven't been doing that. I've been working more on the um, sitting with the sensation, more so than working with the thought. Yeah. And when you sit with the sensation, basically, unconsciously, the mind believes it is a physical body. Because who is experiencing the sensation? The one who perceives it, isn't it? It's the mind. This is why the mind has to return to the starting point, which is you. That's where it starts. And the first starting point is the I thought. It has to return back. So the returning is in the mind, in the thoughts. The body cannot return. The body is moving only one direction, death. The whole work is on the satan. Nothing to do with the object, the body. Even when we work with the sensation and the body, it's obviously the body, the physical body is an echo of the mind. Because pain is a thought. It appears to be physical. The body has no sensations. 
it's the mind. Most, most minds don't recognize that the body has no sensation. Because when you anesthetize the mind and you put the body and they cut the body and do operation, the body doesn't feel anything. Yet when you dream at night and you're running and you fall and you feel that you got hurt and it's all on the subtle, on the thoughts, in the dream you experience a sensation, bodily sensation. So bodily sensation is in the mind, not in the physical body. For some minds, it's too subtle. So they need the body to work with. And that's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's just that the more clear you are, you have to work with the thoughts, with the subtle. And they are the cause of suffering. Because even if someone says, I experience pain in the body, I say, okay, I don't negate it. I don't deny pain. Even when I perceive pain in the body, I, I perceive it, yet it's a thought. Yes? So nobody is even suffering because of the bodily sensation, let's say, or the pain. Suffering begins when the mind doesn't want it. Suffering begins when I want something else. When I resist it. That's where suffering begins. So distinguish between suffering and physical pain, although it's mental. Don't deny anything. Just see it very clear for what it is, not for what it is not. You don't need to deny the mind. Just recognize that the thoughts are not real and therefore the mind is not real. Because the mind is made, is, is made from thoughts. Nothing more. And keep the mind around the subject. Hearing over and over again. Hearing the knowledge. For thousands of years the sages for, for a reason pointed. Hearing the knowledge over and over again. That removes ignorance. When you reflect upon it and you look within it removes the doubt. When the mind is one pointed. It removes the misidentification with the body and the mind. It's exact. It's not. It's exactly the process for the mind. If one understand it, use hearing the knowledge. Saturate the mind with that. Then it occupies with that instead of objective thoughts. It pushes the mind to look within and occupy with itself and not wander into a dream. Still it's not real, yet that's the way for the mind to wake up from the dream. Yes, when I'm in work I listen to the to videos and um, videos all day. So good that's that's the work so actually you might think you go to work yet you occupy with the most important work
Thank you, Alon, for your help. You're most welcome. Any time you have doubt or something, or any or the mind needs any clarification, you can contact us. Because sometimes few words and it points the mind into the right direction or brings it back into track. And it just supports the mind, protects the mind so it doesn't get lost in the dream, that's all. Okay. All the very best. Okay, thank you.